Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to Sunday's. It is so fantastic to have you with us this afternoon. Do you know we're going to have so much fun today? We've learned all about the 12 disciples. We've learned all about the women in the Bible. And we're going to learn some new stuff this afternoon, boys and girls. Are you ready? All I need to do is say welcome to Sunday School Live. And if you want to put your name in the comments box below, you might get a shout out. So all I need to do is say good afternoon. To Nancy, good afternoon to Ricardo. Good to have you, Ricardo. Good afternoon to Laramie. Good afternoon to Jacob. Michael, you're in the house. Good afternoon, Spencer, Kelsey, Annabelle. It's good to have you with us. I hope you didn't eat too much birthday cake last week. Boys and girls, it is time to get going. It is Sunday School Live, and what do we do? We sing. So I want you to get on your feet, boys and girls, whether you're on YouTube or whether you're on Facebook. It doesn't matter. You can still get on your feet and let's sing all together. Are you ready? The wise man built his house upon the rock. Let's go. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came down the rain. The rains came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house of the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house of the sand went flat. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down. The blessings come down as your prayers go up. The blessings come down as your prayers go up. The blessings come down as your prayers go up. So build your life on the Lord. That's right, boys and girls. We can build our life on the Lord Jesus Christ because of what he's done. We can have our sins forgiven. Isn't that right, boys and girls? What do we need to do, first of all, when we start Sunday School Live? Or when we start our day, boys and girls, it's really important that we ask God for his help. We can ask him for help in little things, in big things. Do you know what? God wants to hear from every one of us every day, not just once a day. How many times in the day I hear you ask? Boys and girls, you know what we do? We pray one, we pray two, and we pray three. Our God and Father, we thank you that we can pray to you at any time, in any place. And after we thank you that however many people are praying in the whole world, you can hear us. And our Father, we thank you for your help already today. And we just pray for your help today. As we, our fathers, try to learn something more from your word about your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us today, we pray. Bless all the boys and the girls and everybody that's watching today in your son's most holy and precious name. Amen. Boys and girls, I want to thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. I say good afternoon to Lois and good afternoon to Abby. It's good to see you this afternoon. Good afternoon to Jeremy. Boys and girls, it is fantastic to have you all with us today. But we've got something new to learn. Are you ready? Boys and girls, let me tell you, if you've ever read the Bible, you will learn something new every single time. Did you know that some people call the Bible a living book? That means every time you open it, God will speak to you. And we've learned so many things, boys and girls. We learned about the 12 disciples over the last six weeks. But boys and girls, we are going to learn something new for a couple of weeks. We are going to learn about animals at the cross. You got a little bit of a hint if you look at the screen of the animals that we might learn about today and next week. 
boys and girls, we are going to learn about this animal. Are you ready, Abby? Abby, what do you think we're going to learn about today? Jacob, we are going to learn about this animal. This animal is called a lamb. Some of you might have said a sheep, and I will forgive you this time and this time only. Because, boys and girls, a sheep used to be a lamb. A lamb is just a baby sheep. So, boys and girls, we're going to learn this week about animals associated with the cross and what they teach us about Jesus. Boys and girls, let me tell you a fun fact about a lamb or a sheep. Did you know, boys and girls, that a lamb's eyes, a lamb's eyes, get this one, boys and girls, a lamb's eyes. Elione, are you ready? Daniel, are you ready? Lois, David, a sheep's eyes are like goats. Yeah, that's right. They're like goats. But that's not the fun thing, Jonathan. What are you going to tell us about their eyes? Their eyes are rectangular. Do you know that our pupils, the black bit... Oh, now, I didn't go and learn human biology quite a few years ago. So if I've got this wrong, you can correct me, boys and girls. The, the, that black thing is circular in our eyes. But in a lamb's eyes, or a sheep's eyes, or a goat's eyes, that is rectangular. Did you know as well, boys and girls, that sheep can recognise up to about 50 other sheep and their faces. And if they will remember them for two years. When you see a sheep or a lamb in the field, boys and girls, you remember that they are very intelligent. And if you do something wrong, they'll remember your face for two years, boys and girls. But that's not as good as God. He knows everybody by name, not just 50 people and not just for two years. Boys and girls, God knows who you are. God knows what we think, what we do. He knows everything about us, everybody in the world. And there's how many billion people in the world? Boys and girls, the Lamb teaches a lot about ourselves and about Jesus. But let me tell you something else, boys and girls, because I want to tell you that what John tells me about Lamb, not me, because I'm Jonathan. Some people call me John, but... Let me tell you what John tells you about the lamb. We can read that the lamb comes in the book of John and it's used in someone's name. And you know what, John, when he's introducing Jesus to everybody else, he says, behold, I've got an amazing thing to tell you about and someone incredible to introduce to you. And you know how he introduced this person? He says, behold, the Lamb of God. Wow. Who could that be? John the Baptist was there one day with a crowd of people around him. And he said, this man over there is coming to us just now. Him. He is the Lamb of God. He was telling us all about Jesus. But why? Was he called the Lamb of God? Do you know what? In the Old Testament, boys and girls, in the first part of your Bible, starts in Genesis, ends in Malachi, the Old Testament. There's lots and lots of sacrifices. People had to pay the price. Some A price had to be paid for the sins that they had committed. Do you know what, boys and girls? The Bible tells me, and you tell me, that we are all sinners. We've all done stuff that is wrong and sin needs to be judged. So God instituted, that's a massive word, Jonathan, sort it out. God planned, had a plan that there would be a sacrifice. Something else would die in the place of somebody else. Kind of like if you were playing football. Yeah. If you're playing football and you get tired or you injure yourself and you get someone to come on in your place, a substitute, a substitute. Boys and girls, do you know what? We can never get rid of our sin because we sin every day. 
So that's what the people had to do. They had to sacrifice and sacrifice and sacrifice again. Because they sinned all the time. Just like me and just like you. But boys and girls, let me tell you this. That why John told that this one in front of him was the Lamb of God. Because he was the Son of God. And that he was the perfect substitute. He was the perfect sacrifice. And because the Lord Jesus Christ did never sin, because he is perfect, he can take the price from my sin. And he's not missed you out because he's taken the price for your sin. And he's taken the price for everybody's sin in the whole entire world. So, boys and girls, what lesson can we learn? That the Lord Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice for me and for you. So that we can trust him because he has taken that place, the judgment that we should have had. And he's taken it upon himself so that we can have our sins forgiven. When you see a lamb in the field, remember his tangle eyes. Remember, boys and girls, he can remember 50 sheep for two years. But remember, more importantly, that God knows all of our names. And you know what? If we put our trust in him, he writes our names in a book. Not because he's going to forget, but because it's a record of everyone who has got their sins forgiven. And we are praying today, boys and girls, that you too have your sins forgiven. And you can have your sins forgiven if you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. We can learn a lot, can't we, from a lamb, just a little lamb in the Bible. Boys and girls, you've listened very well. I want to say good afternoon to Jeremy. Good afternoon to Elioni, Daniel, Lewis, David, Divine, Sasha. Good afternoon, Elijah. Hope you are with us and awake, Elijah. Are you okay? Good afternoon to Gabby and good afternoon to Jorge. Fantastic to have you with us all today. Let's sing. Are you ready? Boys and girls, that God cannot do within his power and his might and his amazing authority. Boys and girls, I hope you were singing. J. Mary, I hope you were singing too. So, boys and girls, thank you very much for joining us today. And it's time to learn a part of the Bible. Did you know, boys and girls, I've already said that the Bible was split up into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And within that, we have 66 books. And within those books, we have chapters. Because it'd be very difficult to find your place in a book without knowing where to go. And within the chapters, we have verses. Let me leave you with a bit of Bible trivia. There is one book. Now, as I say that, that's not quite right. But there's one book that has no chapters. And there's maybe some letters that have no chapters as well. One because one of them is so big and one because they're so small. But boys and girls, there's your Bible trivia for today. And now it's time to go to the studio. So are you ready, boys and girls? 
it is time to find out what our verse was last week. Can you remember, Annabelle? Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Brilliant, Annabelle. Thank you very, very much for reminding me of the verse that we learned last week. Maybe, Armani, oh, are you in the house? Armani, oh, it is your time. Are you on stage, boys and girls? Armani, oh, what was the verse last week? Uh, come on to me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28. Oh, Marnie, you are amazing. Thank you very, 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 very much for recording the verse and learning the verse. More importantly, oh, Marnie, it's important that you too and all the boys and the girls come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have one person that's been learning the verse very, very well as well. Jorge, what was the verse last week? Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy lady and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Absolutely fantastic. Do you know what that means? Anywhere in the world you can learn this verse in English or in whatever language you want, because boys and girls God understands and God listens to us in any language, doesn't matter where we are where we're from. God loves you. Boys and girls, we've got a new verse to learn this week. And this is about the Lord Jesus. It says this, should I say it together? Are you ready? Christ died for sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 you could say it better than me, can't you, boys and girls? So are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. That's right, boys and girls. But Jonathan, what can we learn from this verse? Are you ready? The first word is maybe the most important word, boys and girls, because it's really important to understand what this verse is about. Christ, that's one of the many, many names of the Lord Jesus. But did you know that this name means anointed one or the Messiah? He was the promised one, boys and girls. He was promised by God to come into this world, to die for my sins and to die for your sins. Christ. Do you know what the next word is that I want to think about? It's kind of the end. It's kind of something that happens to every one of us. What do you think that word could be? Died. Do you know what, boys and girls? Let me tell you this. One day, we will all die. Do you know what? Christ. He was the only one that came into this world and had a choice if he was going to die or not. That's right. We don't get a choice. We will all die. But Christ came into this world and he had a choice to make. Do I die or do I not? And do you know what he chose, boys and girls? He chose to die. He chose to pay the price for the sins that I've committed and the sins that you've committed. Christ died. He paid that ultimate price, the biggest price. He died and he chose to do that. That's how much he loves you and that's how much he loves me, boys and girls. He didn't have to die, but he said, I'm going to do it for you. That's amazing, isn't it, boys and girls? If you ever want to know what love is, that is love. How that Christ died. Do you know what, boys and girls? Do you know why he died? Yes, he chose to do that for, for you and for me. But he died because of this. He died because of those three letters. 
or those four letters. He died because I've sinned and because you've sinned. But what are sins, boys and girls? Sin is when we think or when we do something against God's perfect standard. Do you know what, boys and girls? God was trying to explain this to us. And do you know how he did it? He gave 10 commandments, 10 things that God said that we should all do to be perfect. Ten commandments. And you know what it really showed to us? It showed to me and it showed to you and it showed to the nation of Israel that we have broken at least one of those things. We are all sinners. Boys and girls, we've all broken God's holy and righteous laws. But the good news is that Christ died. Let's learn this verse, boys. Whoa, what's happened? Boys and girls, we are losing memory, losing data. That Those words have been encrypted. Boys and girls, it's time to learn the verse together. Are you ready, Michael? Are you ready, Spencer? Are you ready, Kelsey? Are you ready, Elione, Jamarie, Abby? Ricardo, let's get going. Are you ready? So we count you down. Ten commandments. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 11, verse 28. Boys and girls. Sorry, first, I got that wrong. I was I was remembering the reference from last week. Reset, Jonathan, reset. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Boys and girls, let's try and get it right this time. You're better than me. Are you ready? Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. That's right, isn't it, Elione? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Laramie, I hope you're doing it better than me. Make sure you correct all of my mistakes, because boys and girls, the words are just off the page, and it is time divine to say it through one more time. Are you ready, Annabelle? Are you ready, Lois? Are you ready, Jeremy? Are you ready, Jay Marie? Are you ready, David? Gabby, Gabby, Gabby. Let's go. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Boys and girls, you are learning this very well. Thank you very, very much. Let's say it through. Once again, all the words come back and they're all in the order. Just check. No mistakes. Are you ready? Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Boys and girls, if you can record that and send that via Facebook, via WhatsApp, via email, and then we can put that into the studio next week. And you can remind all the boys and girls of the verse that you have learned. Thank you very much, guys, for learning these verses together. It is the word of God. It's not what I'm saying. It's not what anyone else is saying. It's what God is wanting us to know. And how awesome is that? Boys and girls, it's time to sing. Are you ready? I think this is about the amazing, the God. No, Mr. Noah, Bill Nark. Whenever you see a rainbow, 
What do you remember when you see a rainbow? You remember. That's right, boys and girls. Whenever you see a rainbow, remember. Not the 5th of November, but you remember. That's right. You remember God is love. I know you can do that better than me. God is love. Isn't that right, boys and girls? God loves us so much. How much did he love us? He loves us that much. Boys and girls, I can't even show you how much God loves because my arm is chopped off as wide, as wide as the ocean. Boys and girls, it's time for our story. If you are standing up, why not take a moment to sit down and listen? Boys and girls, if you are sleeping, now is the time to wake up. I don't know why you would sleep through Sunday School Live because it's so action-packed, it's so fun, it's so incredibly, awesomely amazing. No time to sleep, boys and girls. But now it is time for the story. So are you ready? I'm going to tell you, boys and girls, about these Roman soldiers. They were very scary men. And you know what they did on the day of our story? The Lord Jesus Christ was there going to make that choice that only he could make that chose to die. Jesus Christ, and he was carrying his cross. There was two criminals there in that scene that day. And you know what? They also carried their cross. They were criminals. They were bad people. They were sinners, just like you and just like me. They were led away to be crucified. The Roman Empire had this form of punishment that was so cruel and grotesque that it doesn't happen anymore. Do you know what? A loud crowd were following the Lord Jesus that day. They were crying. They were weeping. They were upset. They were sad of this was happening. Boys and girls, let me tell you, the Lord Jesus has been badly beated, beaten. There was a man in the crowd that day, Simon Cyrene from Cyrene in North Africa, and he took that cross for Jesus. He carried it for him. And then they led Jesus out of the city to a place called Golgotha. Do you know what the name Golgotha? It means the place of a skull. And Jesus and those two criminal criminals, they were nailed to the cross that they had made for them. Jesus was there. He was in the middle cross. And the one in the middle, and there was two, one man beside him and one man the other side of him. There was three nailed to the crosses. Boys and girls, let me tell you, it was nine o'clock in the morning that day. Maybe even before you had got up. Nine o'clock in the morning. And, and these soldiers, they divided Jesus' clothes among them. They took the clothes from him. And there was an inner garment and it was woven in such a special way that it had no joins it had no seams in it it was so valuable they decided not to rip it up and to share it they cast lots for it they got some coins you can see them there and they may maybe took a cost of a toss of a coin and they that decided who was going to take that piece of clothing from the lord jesus that wasn't an, any ordinary thing, boys and girls, because this was going to happen. Why do you know that, Jonathan? Because if you read in the Old Testament, it will tell you this. They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. Do you know what? We get this thing in the Bible, let me tell you, boys and girls, called prophecy. That's when God was telling something. That was going to happen before it happened. And God said that this would happen because, boys and girls, let me tell you this. That God knows absolutely everything. Not like the sheep who can just remember 50 faces for two years. But God knows the future, boys and girls. Do you know what? Let me tell you this. Those that passed by on that day, that morning. They were crying and they were shouting at the Lord Jesus. They were they were wagging their heads. They were just saying stuff that was not nice. They were saying bad things to the Lord Jesus. They said to him, you said you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Why can't you come down from the cross? And you know what the chief priests, the religious people, the people that should have known better, they said, you saved 
others. Can't you save yourself? And the soldiers, they were as well. They were joining in that day and they were mocking. They were not saying nice things to the Lord Jesus, boys and girls. Do you know what? Even one of the criminals that was on the cross beside the Lord Jesus said, aren't you the Messiah? Can't you save yourself and us? Let me tell you, boys and girls, the criminal on the other side, he was very different. Do you know what he said? He said to the other man, don't you fear God? We are here because we are bad people. We've done wrong and we're getting punished for that which we've done. And then he turned and said, Jesus, Jesus, will you remember me when you go into your kingdom? And the Lord Jesus replied to him. And said, I tell you a truth, today you will be with me in paradise. They were the best words that he'd ever heard, boys and girls. And then it came a few hours later and there was darkness upon the whole land for those three hours. Boys and girls, let me tell you. At around three in the afternoon, Jesus cried with a loud voice and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus exclaimed, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And he bowed his head. He made that choice, boys and girls, to die for you and for me. Boys and girls, there was a Roman centurion there that day. It was his job to be in charge of the crucifixion. He was there watching those three men and Jesus. Suddenly, he said, surely this was the son of God. He listened. Maybe he had met the Lord Jesus before and he could hear what Jesus was saying and the choice that he had made to die for the sins of the whole world. And boys and girls, as evening approached, and the next day was the Sabbath. Pilate gave permission for the legs of those to, that have been crucified to be broken so they would die quickly. The legs of the two criminals either side of Jesus were broken on the left and on the right. However, boys and girls, as Jesus had already made that choice, he had, he had died. He had paid the price. He had finished the work that, Jesus, that God had asked him to do. There was a soldier and thrust a spear into his side and blood drained out. Do you know what that fulfilled another prophecy in Psalms that no bone of him should be broken? And another prophecy in Zechariah that they shall look on him whom they've pierced. Boys and girls, you might think that God was not in control this day, but God was in 100% control because everything was being conducted to God's timetable in God's way and in God's plan. Boys and girls, there was a man there that day. He was a good man. He was an upright man. Joseph, you might call him. And he was a member of the Jewish council. And he went to Pilate and asked permission to bury Jesus. And Pilate said, that's fine. That's good. You can do that. So Jesus, Joseph took the body of Jesus down and wrapped it very carefully in a linen cloth took it to an empty tomb that was cut out in the rock that he had actually made for himself. But he said, I'm not important. Jesus is more important. Boys and girls, have you ever made that choice and that decision? That the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that can forgive you of your sins. That is more important than anything that we can ever do. Boys and girls, there was a large, there was a large stone rolled over that tomb. And the Pharisees, they were aware of this. And, th and they said, after three days, I think he said he was going to rise again. So I think we need to sort this out. We need to get Roman soldiers and we need to get them with spears and daggers and swords and shields. Just in case. He's true. It's real. Just in case. We need to be ready. So there was a two guard set and boys and girls next week we'll find out what happened next after that guard was set and that tomb was sealed 
But I want to tell you this picture. You've already seen what happened on the cross of the, the Lord Jesus Christ, boys and girls. But let me tell you that he made that choice. He took that place because he wanted to take the punishment for my sins and the punishment for your sins. And that if you ask him to be your savior, he will guarantee that you will have your sins forgiven. This is the best and the most amazing news that I could ever tell you, boys and girls. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for paying attention. And thank you very much, boys and girls, because that's the best news ever. But boys and girls, it's time to sing. Are you ready? Time to sing the countdown song. Boys and girls, this is a countdown. It's fast paced. We sing backwards. We sing forwards. Are you ready, boys and girls? Let's go. We're counting down towards we are counting the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. Who's he coming back for? He's coming back for everybody that has put their trust and their faith in him. Boys and girls, we need to give thanks to God for so much, don't we? We need to give thanks to God for today, for what we have. But we need to give thanks to God for his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? One, two, three. We thank you, God, today. That you've given us so much already, but you've given us the greatest present, the greatest gift, the greatest sacrifice ever, your son. And we thank you that he made that choice to die for us, for me and for, for everybody. And we thank you that he went to that place called Calvary. He took that cross and those hours of darkness when he, he was punished for the sins that, that I've done, that we've all done. We thank you, God, that our Father, that that He went that He went to that place and He went that way because without that we would be without hope and without God in this world. So, Father, bless the boys and the girls and everyone listening to this afternoon. We pray in Your Son's precious name, Amen. Boys and girls, I want to thank you very much for joining us at Sunday School Live. Boys and girls, I want to thank one special person, Laramie. Are you ready? Because Laramie was the only one that did the quiz last week. So, Laramie, you are amazing. You got 17 points. Absolutely fantastic. Well done. This would not be possible, boys and girls, without all the amazing resources that are here available to us. Boys and girls, I want you to remember to remind me to remember to say, to not forget that the question time, you can get that. that online quiz and you get that as a link in the box above or below or down the side or at the back or in the front or somewhere you'll find a link and it will take you through to the online quiz and you can remember all the stuff that we've learned today if you want to do the be in the studio next week all you need to do is record a audio clip of the memory verse and then you too can be in the studio next week if you are on youtube boys and girls you can click if you're on Facebook, you can click like, you can share this post. If you're on Facebook and on YouTube, you just can't get enough, can you, boys and girls? If you're on Facebook and you...